Make sure you follow us uh, on uh, YouTube. Hit the subscribe button, The Monty Show, M-O-N-T-Y, The Monty Show. Hit subscribe. Put a thumbs up on all of our videos. Every day on YouTube, you get a live stream and you get two or three other highlights from the show of the major conversations we had. For instance, today, uh, we will be talking about the Jimma. So you'll get a Jimmer for Debt video today. That's why you want to hit subscribe. Let's talk about Jimmer. Because I understand that the Jimma is one of the greatest and arguably the greatest athlete who's ever played in the state of Utah. Mm -hmm. If you look at what he did at BYU, if you look at the sensation that he was at BYU, um, you know, if you look at just the ability of somebody to put out the word that Jimmer Fredette is coming back to Provo for an appearance, which was a complete hoax, <laughs> and the entire world showed up, that tells you the star power and the the ability that Jimmer Fredette has. Yes. I know a lot about Jimmer Fredette. But you know the thing that I know most? He's not good enough to play in the NBA. Oh, shit. I know. I know. There's going to be Jimma tears. I get it. Jimma! is not an NBA player. And with all due respect to what he is is as a player in China um, and what he was as a BYU baller, like he's a really talented basketball player. And it's not knocking him or taking anything away from his game to say he's not an NBA player. And I only point to the Utah Jazz to prove this. We just spent a bunch of time talking about how the Jazz – Live and die on the three ball. They shoot 40% from three. They shoot 46 threes a game. Do you think if Jimmer could make threes in the NBA that he'd be in the league? A league that is reliant on, on three-pointers. Don't you think if somebody believed that Jimmer Fredette could make a three consistently in the NBA, he'd be in the NBA right now? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me... Tell me that he isn't the same guy as a Kyle Korver. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what the difference is? Kyle Korver is a much larger physical player. Yeah. Right? I look at look at J.J. Redick. Those are two very similar, very similar. bodies, right? J.J. Redick knocks it down in the NBA. Jimmer Fredette did not. And I think it is it is as clearly as I can state it. There, it, it, it and I should set this up. Jimmer scored 70 in China the other day, as he is known to do. He dominates that league. So all of a sudden, of course, the, the thirsty BYU media, with all due respect, the, the guys like, and I, I, it, it, was, it was Ben Criddle on Twitter, should Jimmer try to make another run at the NBA? Sometimes I think I just say shit. Sample what comes out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ben. He should not make a run at the NBA <laughs> because we've already seen that. I want it. Right? Like, But seriously, <laughs> there is a thirst for the Jimma. Oh, he's got to play in the NBA. Uh, if he wasn't Mormon, he'd have an NBA contract right now. Wet, like on book. <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with him being Mormon. Wow, I'm here biased against him because he's a short white guy who played at BYU. Go, go. So I said, yeah. There's no bias against Jimmer Fredette in the NBA. <laughs> oh, well, Devin Booker was jealous because there was somebody on the team who was better than he was at shooting threes, so he ran his ass out of the desert. <laughs> no, it's not what happened. <laughs> Jimmer just... Jimmer, A, struggles defensively because of his size. He is not... It's not even his size. It is his build and his mentality. He's not a dirty dog at that size. Mm -hmm. And to, to play in this league... You have to be a dirty dog at that size. Are we clear on that? Right? You have to get after that ass defensively. Mm -hmm. And he's always struggled to be a physical defender. He's always struggled to get through screens. This is a, it, it, this is a screen in three league, right? Like yes. high pick and rolls, lead to three balls. Like Jimmer has always struggled to defend that. It's a league where the point guard's always compromised because of how much screening goes on. So yes. to get through that and fight through that and give – you're, you're the other four guys on the floor chance. You've got to be physical uh, on defense. And, and Jimmer is, you know, a lot of time we hear the term soft Euro. Jimmer's not even a soft Euro. He's no. just simply too small to get the job done, which is unfortunate because he is exciting.
Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a fun player to watch. And if you have not gone to YouTube and hit the subscribe button on the Monty Show and then immediately gone and searched for Jimmer Fredette highlights in China, you're missing out. Yeah. I mean, he legit, on a, on a regular basis, drops 30 points a night. Yeah. And the way he does it, though, is terrible defense. They don't play tight, close defense on him. Yeah, 30 in Shanghai is probably 10 in the league. Yeah, like... It, it, and I'm not saying that he couldn't that he couldn't score, but I look at I look at his 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 NBA career. Um, he just never was able. He averaged six points a game over his career. And by the way, the thing no one's talking about is he did get his chance. He came back with the Kings and still flamed out. So you know, just saying. I mean, it just is one of those things where when you only average two point two three pointers a game, you're. For a guy who all that that's, that's what he what does you do <laughs> like, right you have to do better than and that. and we were rooting for him hard in Phoenix yeah we had him on the show yeah like they like nobody rooted for Jimmer for that more than we did yeah he's just not an NBA player and there's nothing wrong with saying that it, it it's that emotional component that we as sports fans are never able to get over yeah yep. where oh but it's Jimmer at it, it, church ball Jimmer man. Wait, he should be in the NBA. You are what you are. Because I want to buy his jersey. <laughs> no, he shouldn't be in the NBA because he hasn't proven the ability to be there. Like, I look at his NBA numbers. I mean, he, he just, I mean, he, he never, his, he averaged 13 minutes a game. 13 minutes a game. If he was making threes, trust me, he would have played more than that. Are people myring? No, not in the NBA they weren't. And the guy shot, by the way, the guy shot a 40, what did he shoot from three? He shot 37% from three in the NBA. Mm. Middle of the road. Yeah. He was not a spectacular shooter here. And so I just, I, I think you have to realize that Jimmer is, is a really talented basketball player. Do you think that, you know, Utah sports fans, like, you know, fans of the Jazz or any other team that, that is here, BYU certainly, Utah obviously, Fans of Utah sports, do you think that the only reason that they're so thirsty for a Jimmer return to the NBA is because they don't really have uh, a figure here, a sports figure? Because you really don't have one. I mean, that's why I feel like uh, like as fun as the BYU football team was this year, I feel like part of the reason it was such a you know smashing hit in this market is because there isn't uh, you know a a Devin Booker in Phoenix or, you know, uh, you know, whatever, whatever guy you want to point to in some of these other, Mar Don I mean, yeah, but, but, but that's my question is, does Donovan have that like star power even in his own state? I don't know. Like sometimes I wonder because the, the Jimmer thing is just such a, like it, you're literally like casting a rope, like 50 years back in time for the Jimmer stuff. Like it's so old to me. And yet people still are yeah. thirsty on it. Dude, he was a spectacular player at BYU. I know, but I'm just saying, like, how long, like, how long are, are fans here going to hold on to that? I'm not saying that they should just write the guy off, but but the idea that because he put up 70 in Shanghai, they're like, oh, he's got to come back to the league. No, it, like, that's just not, that tells me there's not enough here. Well, and I think you have to look at things like his Greek league play. Like, I mean, he he... He averaged 13 points in Greece, yeah. which is a very physical league. Mm -hmm. So if you look at his overseas numbers, Jimmer's a 420 shooter from three overseas. So he is he is precipitously in decline in the NBA. Anyway, to your point about superstars, A, I think there's a couple of things about the state of Utah that, that a lot of people recognize, and I think we have to recognize. This is a football state. Yeah. Um, and I think the NBA will always be second here. It is why Taysom Hill is a massive rock star here. It's why Kyle Van Oy, you know, is a is a rock star here. Um, you look at the fact that, you know, how, how how excited were Utah fans, you know, two seasons ago when they were on the verge? Yeah, you know, if you if you look at you look at some of the storylines that have gone on in this state since just since Utah got into the Pac-12. And you realize the level of passion that is built into football in this state. You realize that, you know, guys like, you know, Travis Wilson was was huge here. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, 
People will live and die with Travis Wilson was a great quarterback. He was so much better than Taysom. Like the Travis Wilson versus Taysom Hill conversations were epic. Because that's what people here are passionate about. Yeah. Yeah. We love our football in Utah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Right? So when you get a breakout star like a Jimma, he really is a star. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I think that's why so many people like to hang on to Jimmer because he was a breakout star from BYU, which does not very often happen. Like Jamal Williams with the Packers, I mean, he's he's one of the most successful players to come out of this state in a, a decade. Mm-hmm. If you really think about it, um, you know, I, obviously Kyle Vinoy has won multiple Super Bowls. Right. But he's not a quarterback. He's a def- he's a linebacker. So right, it's less and, powerful. But yeah, and I so I look at Jamal and I say, okay, well, he's a running back with the Green Bay Packers, and he's had a huge influence on that team. Yeah, I look at Taysom Hill. Um, Taysom Hill is I don't know is Taysom a quarterback anymore? Probably not. Um, but he's a guy that that found a home and the right home, and Sean Payton has used him, and he's been very effective. Right. When you're a star coming out of BYU. And you make it to a league, you're you're going to be a, a a huge name here, and unfortunately, not many of them come back. Like we do. You, here's something from the past. Oh boy, do you remember when we did man camp? Yes, and like we had John Beck and Johnny Harleen. Like we still have the. I have the hat right behind me, of uh, um from John Beck and Johnny Harleen that they signed for us. Like I have an autographed John Beck football. Um, like those two guys were a huge name, mainly because they live in folklore in the in the rivalry. Right. But like it, you bring all those guys back together, and it it was just it was amazing to see how much the fans poured love and adulation on those guys. Yeah. You know, like it was watching. It, it, and for those of you who don't remember, Man Camp was something we did at K Fan, and it was this huge event. Um. Out, oh my God! Out at the Legacy Event Let's Center, go. right? Way out in. You know, like North Valley. Yeah. On a freezing cold Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> it was cold ass. Yeah. BYU that Saturday was playing, anybody, at Notre Dame. And we all watched BYU get stomped by Notre Dame. <laughs> and then the event ended. Um, but it was so much fun hanging out with those guys. Right? And it just was, it reminded you how much fans love their athletes in Utah. So... I don't know. You know, having worked in Los Angeles, I can tell you that it, it is it, working around the Lakers. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. Like Chick Hearn, um, you think about it, Michael Cooper. I watched Michael Cooper get mobbed at the Staples Center. Um, you know, like at, at Orlando Woolridge, who was the head coach of the Sparks at one point. What a name that is. Yeah, getting mobbed. Like, I mean,. L.A. with the Lakers is very similar. But L.A. is just such a different place. Yeah, because they don't give a damn about most pro sports in L.A. No. Right? Like the Dodgers, uh, you know, Tommy Lasorda passing away has reminded us of that. Today, by the way, today's the one-year anniversary of Kobe's helicopter crash. Yeah. He is that guy. He is. He is that guy. I think Irvin Magic Johnson is that guy. Yeah. You know, like, but yeah. there's not a USC love like that. No. No, oh, not good. Carson Palmer's coming back to L.A. Nobody cares. Porter Gustin. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Porter Gustin, who should have gone to BYU. <laughs> like, Porter Gustin is the perfect example in Utah. The kid from Salem playing for the Browns in the playoffs. People are tweeting about him. Like, well, that's a – that's a. so they were so pissed at Bronco that Porter Gustin didn't wind up at BYU. And then they got pissed he went to USC. And they're like, oh, forget all that. That's a Utah boy right there playing for the Browns, <laughs> right? Like that's that's what football means in this state. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So anyway, good old Bronco pouring a bucket of water over my head. Will Smith and I go down to Utah County. We go down to the BYU campus. Bronco autographed the bucket of water he pour, poured over our head. I still have the Home Depot bucket. <laughs> you know, I mean, Memories, dude. those Good were the days. days. Good old days, man. Those were the days. Um, I don't know. It's not, it, it, anyway, we'll bring Donovan back up at some point. Yeah, he'll find a way to make the show again. I don't, <laughs> probably tomorrow, you know. <laughs> I mean, they, they play the Knicks tonight. 